Assalamu alaikum my dear friends here is Sayyidah Umar Shah and today we will be studying the drugs that affect our autonomic nervous system the system which is not under our control and which is involuntary so without delay let's begin our today's lecture So the drugs that affect our autonomic nervous system are classified into cholinergic drugs and adrenergic drugs. The cholinergic drugs mimic the action of acetylcholine, while adrenergic drugs mimic the action of epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now the cholinergic drug is further divided into the cholinergic agonists and the cholinergic antagonists. The cholinergic agonist will enhance the activity of acetylcholine, while the cholinergic antagonist will inhibit and stop the activity of acetylcholine. Cholinergic agonists may be direct acting cholinergic agonists, or it may be indirect acting cholinergic agonists the direct acting cholinergic agonist bind directly to the receptors while indirect acting cholinergic agonists bind to the enzyme that is responsible for the breakdown of acetylcholine now, indirect acting cholinergic agonists may be reversible or irreversible. In reversible, the drug loosely attaches to the acetylcholine esterase enzyme and inhibits its activity temporarily. While in irreversible cholinergic agonists, the drugs bind covalently tightly to the acetylcholine esterase enzyme and permanently inhibit its activity. Now coming towards the cholinergic receptors. These are the receptors that uses acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter. They are classified into muscarinic receptors and nicotinic receptors. They are distinguished from each other on the basis of their affinity to different cholinergic agents, the agents that will mimic the action of acetylcholine. Now here you can see in this figure are the five classes of muscarinic receptors. If an acetylcholine binds with the M1 receptor, which is present in the central nervous system and gastric parietal cell, it will excite the central nervous system and it will stimulate the gastric acid secretion. But if an acetylcholine binds with the M2 receptor, which is present in the heart, it will induce bradycardia, which is the slow heart rate. M3 is also excitatory in nature and it will stimulate exocrine gland secretions and smooth muscle contraction and vascular endothelium cell dilation. M4 and M5 receptors are present in the central nervous system. Now coming towards the direct acting cholinergic agonists. The cholinergic agonist is basically a group of medicines that mimic the action of acetylcholine. In direct acting cholinergic agonists, the drug will directly bind to the cholinergic receptors that are muscarinic or either nicotinic. Now here are the drugs that are direct acting cholinergic agonists such that they will bind directly either to the muscarinic or to the nicotinic receptors. 
and we are going to discuss one by one in detail. Now the first cholinergic agonist that we're going to discuss is the acetylcholine. This acetylcholine is a direct acting cholinergic agonist, meaning that it will bind directly to the cholinergic receptors. It shows both muscarinic and nicotinic activity means that it can bind to both muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. Now when this acetylcholine is taken by the herd patient, it binds to the M2 receptors and it decreases the heart rate and cardiac output showing negative chronotropic and negative ionotropic effects. A chronotropic effect means that electrical conduction of heart either increases or decreases. If electrical conduction increases it shows positive chronotropic and it will increase the heart rate but if electrical conduction decreases it will shows negative chronotropic and it will decrease the heart rate on the other hand you can see the negative ionotropic so the ionotropic effect indicates the contraction of the heart so if the contraction of the heart is greater it will shows positive ionotropic while if the contraction of the heart is slower then it will shows negative ionotropic now positive ionotropic effect will have greater cardiac output while negative ionotropic effect will have lower cardiac output. Now this acetylcholine also causes vasodilation through which blood pressure also lowers. Now how this acetylcholine causes vasodilation? It basically binds to the M3 receptors found on the endothelial cell lining the smooth muscles of the blood vessel. Now, when it binds to the N3 receptors, it induces the production of nitric oxide from arginine. That nitric oxide then stimulates protein kinase G production and leads to the hyperpolarization. This nitric oxide also relaxes the smooth muscle through phosphodiesterase 3 inhibition. Now, this acetylcholine also increases saliva secretion and it stimulates intestinal secretion and motility. Further, it also enhances bronchiolar secretion and thus causes bronchoconstriction by binding to the M3 receptors. This acetylcholine also increases the tone of the detrosal muscle which is a muscle lining the bladder and causes in urination. This acetylcholine can also cause meiosis which is the constriction of pupil and thus it can be used as a therapeutic in ophthalmic surgery. The second cholinergic agonist is the botanicol. This botanicol is also direct acting cholinergic agonist means that it will bind directly to the cholinergic receptors. But this botanicol only has muscarinic activity means that it can bind only to the muscarinic receptor. This botanical cannot be hydrolyzed by acetylcholine esterase enzyme. This acetylcholine esterase enzyme is used to break down the acetylcholine into acetyl and choline group. Now, if an operation is done, after that operation, if a patient suffers from urinary retention, then you can give him botanical as a treatment. You can also give the botanical and a paralytic alias. Now, this botanical major actions are on the smooth musculature of the bladder and GIT tray. This also causes increase in intestinal mortality and tone. It stimulates urination. 
now we have the carbocol which is also a direct acting cholinergic agonist means it can bind directly to the receptor now it also shows both muscarinic and nicotinic actions means that it can bind to both muscarinic and nicotinic receptors but this carbocol is rarely used therapeutically because of its high potency non-selectivity and relative long duration of action now high potency here means that it evokes a given response at low concentration remember that if a drug is highly potent then it will evoke a given response at low concentration but if it has lower potency then it will evoke the same response only at higher concentration high potency here does not necessarily mean more side effect it has to be remembered now this carbocol is poor substrate for acetylcholine esterase enzyme which was used to cleave the acetylcholine into acetyl group and choline now if this carbocol binds to the nicotinic receptor in the adrenal medulla it causes the release of epinephrine this carbocol is used in the treatment of glaucoma which in which there is increased intraocular pressure so this carbocol basically decreases or lowers the intraocular pressure and thus uh, is useful in the treatment of glaucoma now we have the pilocarpine which is also a direct acting cholinergic agonist means that it will bind directly to the cholinergic receptors now you cannot break the pilocarpine down by an acetylcholine esterase enzyme as it is stable to hydrolysis by this enzyme. But the drawback of pilocarpine is that it's non-selective muscarinic agonist. We can use the pilocarpine in ophthalmology. This pilocarpine is a potent stimulator of secretions but its use is limited due to its lack of selectivity now this pilocarmine in clinical practice we use to treat xerostomia which is dry mouth and glaucoma in which intraocular pressure is increased now the shogun syndrome which is characterized by dry mouth and lack of tears is treated with oral pilocarpine tablets and semimaline. Now coming towards the indirect acting cholinergic agonists. These agonists will indirectly induce the cholinergic effect by binding or inhibiting the acetylcholine esterase enzyme. Now, this indirect acting cholinergic agonist may be reversible or it may be irreversible. The reversible cholinergic agonist will bind temporarily to the enzyme while irreversible cholinergic agonist will bind permanent to the enzyme. Reversible cholinergic agonists include adrophonium, physostigmine, neostigmine, paritostigmine, tacrine, donepezine, ribostigmine, and galantamine, while irreversible include Ecotiophyte. Now we are going to discuss each one of them one by one in detail. Adrophonium, which is indirect acting cholinergic agonist, means it will bind to the acetylcholine esterase enzyme. But this comes in the category of reversible indirect cholinergic agonist, means it can temporarily inhibit the acetylcholine esterase enzyme. The reversible acetylcholine inhibitor can be short acting or it can be intermediate acting agents. This adrophonium is short acting acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. 
Now, this hydrophonium can be used in the diagnosis of mesenthemia gravis, which is a chronic autoimmune disorder in which antibodies destroy the communication between nerves and muscles, resulting in weakness of skeletal muscles. Now, if you inject hydrophonium intravenously, then this will lead to a rapid increase in muscle strength in patients with mesenthemia gravis. Now we have a reversible anticholine esterase agent, the physiostigmine. This physiostigmine will temporarily bind to the acetylcholine esterase enzyme and will temporarily inhibit that enzyme. But this physiostigmine can also be broken down by acetylcholine esterase enzyme such that it is substrate for that enzyme. It is intermediate acting agent and it has both muscarinic and nicotinic effects means that it can bind to both muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. This physiostic mean when administered in a person, it causes contraction of facial smooth muscle, meiosis which is constriction of pupil, hypotension and bradycardia which is decreased heart rate. Now if a person uses overdoses of drugs that are anticholinergic acting, such as atropine, then physiostigmine could be the re treatment. This physiostigmine can also reverse the effect of neuromuscular blockers. Now the reversible anticholine streets agent, we have the neostigmine. This has an intermediate duration of action and it is used to stimulate the bladder and GI tract and it is used as an antidote for competitive neuromuscular blockers. This neostigmine is used to improve muscle strength in patients with a myasthenia gravis which i discussed earlier is a chronic autoimmune disorder in which antibodies destroy the communication between nerves and muscles now we have the pyridostigmine which is another reversible indirect acting cholinergic agonist this pyridostigmine will bind loosely to the acetylcholine esterase enzyme and will temporarily inhibits its activity. Its duration of action is intermediate but it's longer than that of neostigmine. This pyridostigmine can be used in the chronic management of myasthenia gravis due to its action longer than that of neostigmine. Now we have the tacrine donepazil, rivastigmine, and galantamine, all these are reversible anticholine stress agent. Now they all play role in the delay of the Alzheimer disease progression, but none can stop its progression. Patients with Alzheimer disease have a deficiency of cholinergic neurons and therefore lower level of acetylcholine in the central nervous system. This observation led to the development of anticholine esterase as possible remedies. Now, tacrine is the first agent in this category but has been replaced by others because of its hepatotoxicity. GI distress is their primary adverse effect. Now we have the irreversible indirect acting cholinergic agonist in which we are going to discuss only the ecothiophate. This ecothiophate is organophosphate compound which is poisonous and can be used as a suicidal and homicidal purposes. Now it is poisonous because it currently binds to the acetylcholine esterase enzyme and permanently inhibit its activity. Now, if an acetylcholine esterase enzyme function is inhibited, it will increase the cholinergic action. 
so in other words egotiophate will causes generalized cholinergic stimulation paralysis of motor function and convulsions convulsions are sudden violent and irregular movement of the body caused by involuntary contraction of muscles now this ecotiophate also produces intense meiosis and can be used in ophthalmic surgery meiosis as i discussed previously is the constriction of the pupil now this ecotiophate is rarely used due to its side effect profile which include the risk of cataracts Now, this cholinergic agonist causes some adverse effects and they may be bradycardia, which is slow heart rate than normal, hypotension, flushing or skin blushing, which is a sudden reddening of the face, neck or upper chest due to increased blood flow. It may also cause breathing difficulty or diaphoresis, which is sweating uh, to an unusual degree as a symptom of a disease or it may be a side effect of a drug. Thanks for watching all my dear friends.